Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Open Door Church. Good afternoon to all of you watching on the internet to today's devotional of Open Door Church Sunbury. And uh, on Mondays, I've been working through the book of Acts, and so we're up to Acts chapter 8. Uh, we're looking at verses 4 to 8, if you want to look that up in your Bibles, but I'm going to read it to you now. We're looking at where the church has been scattered after the martyrdom of Stephen, and then uh, Saul of Tarsus, this Pharisee zealously persecuting the church. And although the apostles stay in Jerusalem, uh, other disciples of Jesus go out. And we read now about Philip in Samaria. So we read verse 4. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down into a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he had performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. And so we see Philip going down into Samaria. It's not really going down, it's going up into Samaria, because Samaria is the northern kingdom. It, uh, the descendants of Samaria would say that they are the, they were the true Israelites, those who were part of the northern kingdom. Do you remember <clears throat> that after, uh, after Solomon, the nation would split into Israel in the north and then Judah in the south to uh, ten tribes and two tribes. And then in 722 BC, the Assyrians uh, took uh, uh, Israel as a nation, took it away, took the people captive, uh, uh, left some of the poorest of the land. But then in 2 Kings uh, chapter 17, verses 24 to 41, imputed into Israel the, 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 the country of Israel, people from Babylon and other other nations, other peoples. And so the Samaritans became like this mixed ethnic group um, who, it says there in 2 Kings, learned a little bit of the religion of Israel, but also mixed in some of its own belief system. And so they were like an impure people. And Philip travels from Jerusalem north into Samaria, and as it says there in Acts chapter 8, preaches the gospel. And uh, and there are deliverances and uh, and um, and healings, and he brings the Holy Spirit uh, to uh, the people in Samaria. And Samaritans put their faith and trust in Jesus, and the church grows. Why did the Samaritans come even to listen? Well, I suppose <clears throat> a bit like any. Uh, uh, any time human beings love to know what's going on. Um, they were curious, I'm sure, of what Philip was saying, even though Philip was declaring that Jesus was the Messiah, that the, that the Jews were right, in a sense, to reject their own faith system and to take on board the Jewish understanding that the Messiah would come from the Jews. And he was declaring that Jesus was in fact that Messiah and that, uh, and that Jesus uh, was the one that they needed to put their faith and trust in. Now, I think, <clears throat> Philip, what a brave bloke. I mean, it wasn't so long ago in Luke chapter 9, verse 54, that the disciple John was uh, so um, so disgusted by these compromised, you know, ethnically mixed, religiously twisted Samaritans that he said to Jesus, why don't you just call down fire on them, you know, and kill the lot of them? So the hatred between the Jews and the Samaritans is quite marked, not just on ethnic grounds, but on religious grounds as well. And we see that, don't we, today, even in, with Palestine and Israel and the nation of Israel and everything that's gone on the last few days and the ceasefire that's so tenuous at the moment, the horror of some of those pictures of you know, children and people murdered. That conflict has gone on for thousands of years and still goes on today. And we see a little of that you know, in, in Luke 9 and everything that's going on. And so Philip was brave to go there and to preach the gospel. And he wasn't one of the apostles, as we said last week. 
Philip, Philip went. He was a disciple full of the Holy Spirit who wants to tell people about Jesus. You see, for Philip, it wasn't it wasn't about what they who they were or what they believed. It was the fact that everybody could come to know Jesus, whoever they were, whatever their ethnic background, uh, whatever their religious belief. Wherever they lived, whatever type of person they are, whatever they did for a job, what, however much money or did or didn't have, whatever their background, they needed to know the gospel. For Philip, the gospel was for everyone. And that's why he went north to this people group. Very brave man to do that. And I just think that's a stunning example, really, of someone who just, you know, with his persecution came in Jerusalem, his reaction was to go north but to do the stuff. You know, he brought the Holy Spirit, uh, praying praying for the sick, um, delivering people from the demonic, preaching the gospel, doing the stuff. Now, makes me think, do you think that Philip had gone to theological college or, you know, studied, what is the true meaning of deep, soteriology soterios means salvation the doctrine of salvation soteriology oh, yes did he study systematic theology uh, has he got a you know, degree master's degree phd in theology? no i don't think he had a reason theology i don't think he thought oh i wonder whether you know are people who aren't jews included in to the nation's to God's holy people, mm, you know, I haven't read the book of Romans because it hasn't, it's not going to be read, be written for another 30 years. I, I don't think any of that. I just think he was so in love with God, so, so thrilled to know the Messiah had come, so understanding of new life in Christ that he knew that Jesus was the savior of the world, not just, just of the Jews, but of the world by all who put their faith in Jesus, but all put their faith and trust in God, for all who follow him. And so I, I don't think he had a reasoned doctrine of salvation. Apart from this, Jesus came to save the lost. And wherever there are lost people, I'm going to tell them the gospel. I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm going to deliver people from the demonic. And I'm going to bring the message of hope and life wherever I go. I think he's a fantastic example of a Holy Spirit-filled person doing the stuff wherever God has placed him. So today, as a Holy Spirit-filled listener to this devotional, where has God placed you? And are you going to do the stuff? Are you going to bring deliverance? Are you going to pray for the sick? Are you going to tell people about Jesus? When it says that Philip preached the word they're preached is kerygma. It means just to tell forth. Everyone can preach. Everyone can tell forth about Jesus. Everyone can tell our story of how we know him. Everybody can give a reason for the hope that they have. You know, we all can do this. So that doesn't mean that you're excluded. Everyone who knows Jesus can tell people about Jesus, can tell them about new life in Christ. So let's do that. Philip overcame huge cultural barriers by going to Samaria. Um, He overcame hatred, um, which we saw with the disciple John. He overcame racism. He overcame his own arrogance of her, of it's only Jews have got to be the only way. No, he saw it was for the whole world. He changed his belief system in that. He overcame you know, fear to go to those people. Um, You know, What a wonderful example of whoever we find that we encounter, let's be bringing Jesus to them. I think he's a brilliant example of that. Are we ready in the same way? Where has God placed you today? Who has God put across your path that you can tell them the gospel, can tell them about Jesus? What barriers do you need to overcome? Uh, Is there anyone or any people any person that you feel I can't bring the gospel to, I can't tell them about Jesus. Maybe it's time to ask the Lord to melt away those those barriers by a passion and love for Him and for making Him known. Let's do that, shall we?
Let's pray. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to break in wherever we are that we might proclaim the King of Kings. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for Open Door Church, Sunbury. Thank you, Lord, for all of those listening on the internet. Thank you, Lord, that you speak into our hearts. Lord God, you fill us full of your love. You show us Jesus. You show us people's need to know him. I pray today, wherever we are, we will bring the Holy Spirit, Spirit's presence, that we will pray for the sick, that we'll be bold to tell our story. No matter how simply, Lord God, we know it, we can tell, Lord God, of how you changed our lives. Help us to do that, that you may be glorified in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen.